Welp. So, I don't know what the hell I've gone and done to get this many people asking me questions, but, uh, let's see what we got. Also consider this a warning that from now on your questions might get answered in video. So like the esteemed Bible Duboinko, let's jump into it. Trademark. Did you eat my cookies? No. I ate my cookies. They were yours until you left them unattended. Should I be embarrassed to be straight? Yes. Shame. 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 Just kidding. The serious answer is, all orientations are valid as long as all participants are consenting adults who pass the Harkness test. Why do I sometimes feel that I should be bi or pan when I'm not? I don't know, I'm not a psychologist or licensed therapist, so take this with a grain of salt, but it might be that you've developed a sense of obligation to reciprocate people's feelings for you, and you're never obligated to feel that way about anyone. That's just not how it works. And you should never feel bad for who you do or don't like, as long as all participants in sexual activity are consenting adults. Mater from Cars is so sexy. Blocked and reported. Why are there so few pterosaur fairies? Some animals are easier to anthropomorphize than others. I eagerly wait the stegosaur, manta ray, and pterosaur fairies once someone figures out how to draw a version of them that makes visual sense. If saber tooth salmon were still alive today, would you eat it? I'm more worried about if they'd try to eat me. Have you ever had focaccia? I googled what it is and I still have no idea what it's supposed to be. Do you eat tortellini one by one, or stab several on the fork at once? Bold of you to assume I use forks. Are Volver's tits on the front or the bottom? Why do you need to know? Where does one start when making a fursona? You're already a furry. It's too late to go back. How do I tell my transphobic psychiatrist that I'm no longer comfortable seeing them? You don't owe them an explanation. Their job is to help you, and if they're not doing that, there is no moral or even manners reason to force yourself to be uncomfortable for their benefit. If you're seeing your psychiatrist through a network or office that has multiple counselors, and you want to try another one through that group, then you should be able to tell the receptionist or scheduler, and you should be able to tell the person that the psychiatrist in question is not sufficiently knowledgeable about your area of needs, or that they have ideological conflicts that make them a bad fit for you and your needs. Doctors are here for you, and while obviously I don't encourage anyone to be abusive or to shout at them, they are the ones who are choosing to deal with other people's traumas so that their patients can get better. You are not paying them to make yourself uncomfortable to cater to their transphobia. I seriously hope that you find someone who understands you and your needs and supports you and isn't biased by transphobia. From the whole team, we wish you well. How much coffee and how much weed is needed to produce a typical Critfax video? Per video, two whole marijuanas, if legal obviously, three cans of Mountain Dew Kickstarter, two Red Bulls, two pots of coffee. And that's just scripting. Then there's voice acting, editing, art, audio editing, and all the other research and digging required to actually have anything worthwhile to say. So lots. Have you seen my agenda? I seem to have misplaced it. Sorry, it's been folded into the gay agenda. You'll get it back once everyone in the world is gay. How do I accept my sexuality? That's a really complicated question, and everyone's journey is going to be different. Ultimately, it's about learning to let go of expectations and toxic messages that have been put on you. And we get them from everywhere. Whether that be just from every single family movie being about a straight couple, prince and princess, to the messages of religious organizations. Though thankfully that seems to be on its way out, at least from what I can see. Or from the constant barrage of heteronormativity and straightness being treated as the best and only way to be. Even asexual people can struggle with self-acceptance, because heteronormativity encourages a culture where sexual attraction and sexual activity with partners is treated as expected, and that can be really alienating and discouraging. Especially for aces who still want relationships but grow to fear being rejected. It comes with time. It's a difficult process and there's no single thing I can say except to constantly work to unlearn homophobia. You'll get the big chunks out of your conscious thoughts quickly enough, and from then on it's a constant struggle of pulling weeds. It might never truly go away unless you completely immerse yourself in queer positive spaces, and even then it can creep in. But self-acceptance is possible, and you deserve it. Everyone does. As long as those you involve with are consenting adults, then you don't owe anyone anything. You don't owe society kids or heterosexual marriage. You don't owe anyone sex or abstinence or purity. We're all learning to let go of expectations and just take joy in being ourselves and dealing with those who appreciate us and who we appreciate back. Grit is sus. Vote them out. I was in electrical doing tasks. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. How do I accept my sexual orientation? I don't know if it's internalized homophobia or something else, but for some reason I feel like my sexual orientation isn't what it should be. 
There is no should be when it comes to orientation. The only part that matters is that all sexual activity is only between consenting adults. All sexual orientations are equally valid. You didn't choose to have the orientation that you have, and even if you could, there's no reason you should choose one over another. It can be tough to let go of the many, many pressures to feel your orientation should be something different than it actually is. But the first step is recognizing that those pressures shouldn't be there and that you shouldn't listen to them. Take steps to consciously remind yourself that those pressures are wrong, that who you like is fine, who you don't like is fine. You don't owe anyone attraction. You don't owe anyone however it would work to just stop being attracted to different people. You don't owe anyone any feelings or lack of feelings. You're valid. You deserve to have your boundaries respected and to get to pursue healthy relationships with people you like. All that a healthy society should ask is that you proactively try to respect everyone else's boundaries. This is the police. We have an anonymous tip that you're keeping crit facts, cartoon fucks on the internet, prisoner, and impersonating them. Open up! You'll never take me alive. Hmm... Burger. Yes. Why does hell culture exist? Because humans will do anything, regardless of whether or not they should. Hey, thanks for checking out our channel. Please consider liking and subscribing and checking out our other videos. Please consider supporting us on Patreon and check out our other links in the doobly-doo. This episode was voiced by Factually Fictitious. That's right, it's a Crypt Factually Fictitious crossover episode. I recorded it in a blanket tent during a tornado.